welcome everybody and thanks for joining this webinar. Let me share my screen in order to start the presentation. Yes, I think now you can see. So let's start the webinar. Um, the, let's start by defining the aims of this webinar. First of all, um, I'm going to do a short introduction of Fennec BG stack concept, which is a different concept uh, when we think about in a standard industrial drive. Then we will describe which are the available options I can have or I can install on the input stage. Then uh, I'm going to go through the selection criteria. So at the end, uh, you can um, answer to yourself when you have a certain project, which is the best product I can use in each case. After um, I'm going to see uh, which kind of tools do we have or we supply here in Fuji Electric Europe in order to help you in this uh, product selection. And yeah, uh, that's then the, the content of, of the webinar. Um, yeah, for the product introduction, then we will see the product, product lineup, which are rectifiers, uh, F3E, which is a product we would like to introduce you today. Uh, F3E is a variation for fundamental frequency front end. So if you allow me to call it like this as a kind of low cost active front end, then we will see the RHC, the, the real active front end, then the product selection criteria, then options, of, um, which options, external or internal options, I have, uh, in this case, for uh, GR9 rectifier and for uh, active from then RHG. Then the, the mentioned tools. And finally, I'm going to do a brief, a short explanation about, about marine certificate that we have in case of Fenning BG family. So uh, product concept. Mm, when we speak about industrial drive, uh, everybody has in mind a kind of box, if you allow, allow me to call it like this box where you supply uh, power, a voltage current from the mains. And on the output, I connect an electric motor. And inside this box, I have uh, power components like diodes uh, mounted in a rectifier, charging circuits, capacitors, uh, braking circuits, and finally, uh, an IGBT bridge, which I switch, or the, the drive switch in order to control the, the electric motor. So that would be a industrial drive, or how, as we call it, unit unit type what is a, a stack drive uh, a stack drive is um, are modules uh, specific modules that uh, connected together um, creates the, the drive i have described just before so this means we have modules that works only as a rectifier modules which works only as an active on then or as a braking circuit in the middle stage or as an inverter on the output side. Um, which are the advantages of uh, using this modular solution? Uh, um, well, the first one is that we can reach big capacities by adding modules. And this means I don't, uh, when, I, when, I, when I'm speaking about a product right, range going from uh, 30 kilowatts to 3 megawatts, for example, I don't need to have a single reference for each uh, available power, but with um, let's say 10, 15 references, I can fulfill the complete range, uh, as I said, from, for example, 30 kilowatts up to 3 megawatts. Uh, this leads to less stock and flexibility because um, with uh, one reference, one reference and, and different units or more than one unit of this reference, I can, I can uh, deliver different products. Yeah, as a very easy example, I have... Uh, unit or a stack unit of 315 kilowatts three times in my stock this means i can supply a stack to control a 315 kilowatts motor i can supply two units to um, control a motor of uh, 600 something kilowatts so two units of 315 or a motor of almost 1000 so three units of 315 kilowatts so with one jerk with, with just one reference in my stock i can um fulfill the specification of uh, three or more kind of applications it's cabinet orientated so the the stack design is is uh, design uh, thinking on the industrial cabinet you can find in the market so that you can easily mount it inside and they fit 
perfectly, uh, especially regarding depth and, and, and width in the standard cabinets you can find in the market. This makes easy maintenance in case, of, in case of failure, because as we have a modular system, when there is a specific part broken, I just need to repair this part. I don't need to disassemble the complete uh, drive, but just repairing the part which is broken, um, it's enough. And finally, this makes a uh, um, system robust to failures and redundant because we can, with a certain configuration or certain wiring, I can make that um, the, the drive or the system keeps working even one module fails. And this means, for example, if I, have, if I have three modules on the output stage to control a motor and one fails, uh, I can control anyway the motor with the two resting modules I have, of course, reducing power and, and, and speed. So um, today's webinar, we are going to see, we're going to speak about which um, modules I can install on the input stage of this system. Option one is rectifier. Rectifier. Uh, as a rectifier, we have uh, two types, RHZ and GR9. Then we have the fundamental frequency front end, or called F3. And finally, we have the active front end, the RHZ. So let's start by a rectifier. A rectifier is a, is a module that um, contains uh, power electronics, uh, diodes or thyristors in order to convert the um, voltage uh, current from the mains from AC to DC. And the current direction is always from the mains to the output to the motor. As, uh, as mentioned before, we have, in this case, two types. Um, we have a pure diode rectifier, the RHT, and a half control rectifier, the GR9. Which are the specifications of the RHD? The RHD is a module based on a rectifier bridge. This means a fully uh, diode base. Uh, this module is uh, available in two voltage supplies, three phases 400 volts and three phases 690. And you can choose between two duties, medium duty and low duty. Um, I'm, I'm going to repeat this concept uh, several times in, in, in this presentation. Now let me describe it in this slide and, and for the rest, I understand it is understood already. So me, when we speak about medium duty, it means that the module is able to deliver 150% overload during one minute and the rest the, of the time, uh, the rated power. And low duty means that the module is able to deliver 110% overload for one minute and the rest, uh, the rated power. In case of RHD, we have two available capacities, one, uh, uh, four, sorry, two in 400 volts and two in 690. They can be connected in parallel to, to increase the power, but we have to apply a lot of the ratings depending on the configuration. This makes this product not very much suitable for, for parallel connection. So we recommend them to use them uh, when they are uh, used together with a matching inverter, with a matching, matching SVG1. So this means we are going to size, or we, gonna, we are going to use the RHD when we have a matching SVG1. Advantage of this product is that it has built-in DC reactor and charging circuit, everything built on this uh, module you see here. Um, yeah. Then we have uh, GR9, or as we call optimized rectifier. Mm, in the specifications, uh, we have uh, the use technology is thyristors. Mm, this means a half control rectifier. The lower part, we have diodes. And the upper part, uh, I have, um, we have thyristors, which are going to be shoot in order to charge the capacitors in a certain moment. Again, we have two duties, medium duty and low duty. Power that I have in a single stack goes up to 1.5 megawatts in 690 and 800 kilowatts in 400 volts. Um, they can be connected uh, in parallel with other ratings. This means um, I can increase much more the, the power. Um, they have built-in AC fuses. And in this case, uh, if we want to improve the power factor, or the harmonic distortion that we are going to 
speak a bit more afterwards. I'm going to use, or we, you can choose to install an external AC reactor. Um, we have, um, or you have two uh, ways to order the product. One is with wheels and another one is without wheels. Yeah. For this uh, product, we have two frames, mm, GR9 AF and GR9 F. And here on the screen now, on the photos, you see uh, the configuration without wheels and the configuration with wheels. Just a moment. OK. Here you have the ordering type code. Basically, um, uh, the important uh, point here would be this, this digit here. Yeah. On this digit is the, the the rated current without overload in the DC part of the module. So on the, so on the output of the of the optimized rectifier, you see here that we can go or we go from two hundred amps up to two thousand amps. Um, um, and another important point here, of course, is, is the voltage supply. Uh, we have uh, two voltage supplies available, three phases, 400 volts, and three phases, 690. Before I mention it, uh, I forgot to mention that the, the three, phases 400, uh, three phases, 690 volts module can be supplied as well as, as a, with a 500 volts AC. Okay? So this makes this product um, one of the products we have in, in our push electric family in order to go to the applications where we have 300, uh, three phases, 500 volts. So uh, now let's um, discuss a bit or let's speak about uh, the ratings. Yeah, as mentioned before, the product is uh, rated and on the type code, you see the current available on the DC part um, in continuous duty, okay? But as mentioned before, um, we are gonna use this product considering two duties, medium duty and low duty. So in this table, you have the current available in each duty. So how I'm going, I'm going to size this, um, this uh, module? First, I need to calculate the expect, expected current I need to have in the, in the capacitors, in the DC ring, in the, in the DC part of the system, in order to supply the motor I have in the output. Um, before, when we speak about the, F, uh, about the F3, I'm going to give some uh, examples and formulas how to calculate this. So please be patient if you have doubts how to size year 9 because explanation I'm going to do um, with F3 is, is equivalent. Okay, here you have um, a connection um, example. This is a basic connection in, in case of having just one rectifier. And on the output, we can have, well, in this case, we have one uh, um, inverted module, but we can have several. Yeah. So we have, uh, starting from the left, we have the mains, we have the EMC filter. After the EMC filter, we have the line reactor that uh, we can decide if installing install it or not, if we want to improve the power factor or reduce the harmonic distortion. When we install the, the line reactor, the harmonic distortion I'm going to have on the input of the system based on the on the method calculation method of the international standards will be of a THDI uh, between 41 and 49. So this is, uh, if you know, the standard THI for a standard unit drive for the market is completely standard standard value. Okay. Then um, we go to the DC part. See on the DC part, uh, I will have two terminals where I will connect the inverter part. And then I have some control signals. I have a start command to, to shoot the, 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 the thyristors. And I will have an external supply, in this case, 24 volts for, for the fan. Yeah. And I have some control signals to, to have hardware communication between the, the rectifier and the inverter, like uh, status of the fuses and, and alarm status, that yeah, it's good to exchange information so both equipments are, are informed what the other one is, is doing. Another way of, of connecting a, a rectifier is in parallel on the output of a, a transformer with two outputs, okay? One star and one delta, as you see in this diagram. This is called a connection with a 12 uh, poles because we, we have a 
double rectifier. Okay, so in this example, we have starting from the left a transformer with two outputs, one star and one delta. And in each output, I connect a rectifier, in this case a GR9, but could be RSD as well, with uh, the, the external EMC filter and the line reactor. And on the output of uh, each GR9, I connect a DC link. And from this DC link, I supply a system. In, in this case, we have a system with two motors, um, one motor controlled by three inverters in, in connected in parallel, and the last one with a, a single single inverter. Yeah. Uh, which is the advantage of this um, configuration? Yeah. The, um, the, the advantage is on the on the harmonic distortion. Yeah. Uh, in this case, when we connect the, the two rectifiers in parallel on the output of the transformer, in the input of the transformer, I'm going to have a total harmonic uh, current distortion, so THDI, around 50%, 15%, 15, 1.5. This is because the harmonics, harmonics generated on, on each rectifier, um, some of them, so for example, the fifth, the seventh, the 17th, 19th, are cancelled between the, the delta part of the output transformer and the star part of the output transformer. So as, as one harmonic cancels the other, cancels the other one, um, on the input of the transformer, I'm going to see um, um, total harmonic distortion current around 50%. So it's a kind of very basic, uh, easy solution to reduce, uh, drastically reduce the, the harmonic distortion. Because if you remember from before, when we have just a single rectifier plus um, a DC reactor or AC, AC reactor, the, the harmonic distortion is between 41 and 49. Yeah. OK. Now let's move to uh, F3, fundamental frequency front end. Okay, uh, this module is based uh, on um, IGBT's um, bridge with uh, flying diodes. Um, in this case, uh, we take the energy from the mains. We, uh, the device converted from AC to DC. It supplies um, the DC link of the system, the capacitors of the system, and the module is able to manage the current flow from mains to the motor and from motor to the mains. This means this is a regenerative um, um, module. As I'm not controlling or regulating the voltage on the DC, neither the, 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 the AC current um, on the input, um, the total harmonic distortion, uh, thanks to the input reactor I'm going to install, is around 30% in both cases, in, in, in motoring mode and in, in region mode. Specifications of, of this, um, this uh, F3. As mentioned, the technology used is ICBT's bridge synchronized with the mains. Um, I have two voltage supplies available, three phases 400 volts and uh, three phases 690. Again, in this case, uh, when we speak about three phases 690 volts, um, this module can be supplied as well with 500 uh, volts. So in case you have projects with 500 volts and region energy is, is, is requested, please keep in mind this product. Um, this uh, device has an external control board and external synchronization board. So uh, keep in mind, you will have to order uh, three references, one for the power part, uh, three, at least three references, one for the power part, one for the um, control board, and another one for the um, synchronization board. Yeah. Two duties, again, medium duty and low duty. Power up to 500 kilowatts. Uh, in case of 400 volts and 550 kilowatts, in, in case of 690, this is just one module, and uh, they can be connected in parallel. And when I connect in parallel, I can go up to 4 megawatts in case of 400 volts and 6.8 megawatts in case of 690. Um, as as uh, mentioned before, we, we in this case we must install external AC reactor, and this AC reactor is is um, four percent. Okay. I'm going to have external charging circuit and external keypad connected to the control board. That is, is optional. You can decide if, if um, you need the, the keypad or not. Please remember that the, the, the chat is open. So if you have any question, any doubt, um, feel free to ask anytime and I will try to answer. I see by the moment there are no questions. So 
I understand everything is very clear, so I, I'm glad. But please uh, don't be shy and, and make questions. So here we have the ordering type code of the F3. The important part here on the type code, or what the only thing I want to mention here is that this number uh, shows the apparent power on the input in normal duty. This means without overload, okay? So this is the ordering type code for the power module. And then we have the ordering code for the main control. So SD-MCU, the ordering code for the synchronization board. So SD-SYMC and the ordering code for the operation keypad, SD-OP. Um, ratings, how to, how to select the proper um, device. Um, well, um, I'm going to choose this device based on DC link current or DC power. And, and on this table, you have uh, the DC current and DC power that this module provides on the output in the both duties, low duty and medium duty. Okay, so let's make an example of, of calculation. Uh, um, how to choose the right um, F3. First, we have an application with a certain motor. Let's imagine I have information only about the motor power. So the first thing I need to calculate is which is the DC power I need to supply to this system. Uh, I'm going to get this power by dividing the motor power given and dividing this value by the system efficiency. In this case, I take as a system efficiency the inverted efficiency multiplied by the motor efficiency. And this will give me a certain coefficient, which I divide the motor power. Then I get in point two, the, the DC current needed to get the DC current needed in case uh, I don't have the real um, motor current, which is always, of course, uh, preferable. I take the power and I divide it by the input voltage and multiplied by the by the AC DC factor, this gives me the DC current needed for this specific uh, system. In point three, I have to check if I have uh, to apply any ratings, like because, uh, for example, for the altitude where I have to install the system, for the temperature, if, if, if the system must work at 50 degrees, for example, or if a set specific switching frequency is requested, is required. So as, as you all know, um, all those variables uh, can uh, can generate uh, the ratings on, on on the system. So keep in mind in order in order to when do you do this calculation because the power calculated and and the current calculated must need to be adjusted according to the ratings. So uh, as soon as I have the final DC and uh, um, power and current, I go to the F three table I've shown before. I choose uh, if I go for low duty or medium duty. This comes defined by the application itself. And I select a product where the power delivered by the module and the current del delivered by the mo module, both, uh, both um, numbers are bigger than the calculated values by the formulas I have explained now. So here, let's do a, a calculation example. We have a motor power uh, in this application of 355 kilowatts. Uh, voltage supply is 190 volts. Customers tell us, or we know because of the application type, that the overload required is low. It's 110% and um, for 20 seconds. And, and no ratings factors are detected because the altitude is normal, let's say, or a standard temperature as well, and, and switching frequency not, not specified, and so on, so on. So let's calculate the, the power. Uh, motor efficiency and inverted efficiency is calculated as 0 0.85. So we divide 355 by 0 0.85. This gives us a power of 418 kilowatts. We take the 418 kilowatts and we divide it by 690, which is the input voltage of the system and the 1.35 converting factor. And I have a current of 449 amps. No rating applied, as mentioned before, so no need to do extra calculation. Then I go to the F3 uh, table and let's say tentative, I select the STF3A475K690. This module uh, gives uh, in the output a power DC load duty of 454 kilowatts and a current of 488 amperes. 
So point uh, four point two power is the power delivered by the STF bigger than the required power? Yes, it is because uh, it delivers four hundred fifty four kilowatts while I need four hundred eighteen. Point uh, four point three is the current delivered by the module uh, bigger than the current needed in the application? Yes, uh, the module delivers four hundred eighty eight amperes while I need four hundred forty nine. So final conclusion, the chosen device STF3A475K690 is the right device for this system. OK, let's see now a basic uh, wiring example. Yeah, starting from the left, as always, we have a mains. From the mains, uh, I connect the EMC filter. And from the output of the EMC filter, uh, I have two stages. Uh, one is the, the one supplying the, the F3 module, module pa power module, sorry. And the lines which are connected to the synchronization board in order to synchronize the re regenerated current. OK. Um, um, so. Mm, and on the power side, you see that after the EMC filter, I have two conductors, certain resistors, line reactor. I'm, I'm speaking about this, this part here. Um, yeah, uh, this is for, for the charging sequence. So first I need to charge the capacitors and the capacitors uh, are going to be charged through the charging resistors well, that you see on the, on the lower part of, of, of the input stage. And the F3 control board, so as the SDMCU, by means of the digital inputs and outputs, is going to control the sequence of the contactors. So first, PRC contactor will be closed. And when the contactors are charged, PRC contactor opens and MCB contactor closes. And the system will be supplied not by the resistors, but through the, through the line reactor. OK. So uh, this means the power module is connected by means of uh, optical cable um, to, the, to the control board, SDMCU, and by means of a standard cables, uh, SDMC, SDMCU. So the control board of the system um, is synchronized with the synchronization board, and the synchronization board, SDS, Y, and C, is synchronized with the mains. Yeah. Um, I will need uh, external power supplies, 24 volts to supply um, the, the control boards on the power module and, and the main control board, and 400 volts to supply the fans. So keep in mind as well when designing your system. And uh, finally, we have the, the, the active front end, the RHE converter. In, in this case, it's uh, an um, active front-end device, a module based on, on IGBTs, which uh, regulates, controls the DC voltage and the AC current in order to have a pure sinusoidal wave, or almost pure sinusoidal, sinusoidal wave, regenerate energy and manage the energy in order to have a low THD, I uh, always below 5%. So specifications of this product, yeah, as mentioned, it, the, the use technology is IGBT's bridge synchronized with the mains. Uh, so IGBT is switching continuously in order to generate uh, almost perfect sinusoidal wave when motor is working as a motor and when motor is working as a, as a brake. Two voltage supply available, three phases 400 volts and three phases 690. Two duties, medium duty and low duty. Um, we have single stack and block stack configuration. After I'm going to explain what this means. Power up to 1000 kilowatts in case of 400 volts and 450 in case of 690 in single stack. But of course, they can be connected in parallel. In order to connect them in parallel, I will need an uh, option card that I'm going to explain afterwards as well. And then um, size is done by, by power. So when we have motor power, I select the unit by power. So here you have the two big frames uh, available, the single stack and, and the block stack. What we understand by a single stack, single stack is a module where I uh, connect on the lower part of this module, the three phases, L1, L2, and L3. And on the output, I have DC, so positive and negative. So one module to supply a DC bus. What is a block stack? A so block stack is a reference 
where I'm going to get three stacks. So you see, one, two, three. Um, stack one is for, for phase L1, stack two is for phase L2, and stack three is for phase L3. So in other words, the three stacks together um, takes the three phases uh, from the mains and, and generates the ceiling on the output. Uh, you, you just need to order one type code, okay? And with this type code, you receive the three modules, uh, you receive the cables to connect the modules between them. And as you see here, um, the middle uh, module, so L2 module or the S module, is the master module. And in this one, I'm going to have the control board and the keypad, okay? So here you have the ordering type code. And on this number here, after RHC, I have the, the nominal power where I'm going to use to select or uh, to choose according to the motor power. Then I have the S stands for uh, standard stack or block stack. And yeah, to voltage available for or 69 for 680. Yeah, as mentioned before, um, the, this module, the active front end, um, bases its control on, on regulating, controlling the, the voltage on the DC link and, and uh, switching the IGBTs. On the out on the input, in order to have a almost perfect sinusoidal wave, that when motor is is working as a motor, I have the, the almost perfect sinusoidal wave here, as you see in, the, in this graphic, synchronized with the voltage. And when I'm re regenerating, or when the motor is regenerating, the almost perfect sinusoidal wave is a shift with the voltage. Mm, yeah, before I, I mentioned it, that the THTI will be below 5%. Uh, why below 5%? Because, of course, the THTI depends on, on the load I have on the output. Okay, so let's say 5% is a conservative uh, value. So if, if you see the yellow line here, um, here we have the values, um, simulated values of a real case where I have a RHC and RHF of 280 kilowatts. Uh, in case of 100% uh, of the load, so um, 315 kilowatts in this case, you see uh, on the last column the THDI obtained is around 3%, so a bit below, it's 2.98% uh, of THDI. Yeah. When, when, when the load uh, increases or decreases and, and we um, go far, or more far from, from the rated value, the THDI uh, changes. Yeah, so you see, I can have, uh, yeah. So in the case of a 50% THDI, 5% uh, THDI, sorry, would be the case of 50% uh, of the uh, load in monitoring mode, for example. Yeah. Okay, uh, basic connection. I have the mains. Um, then I have the EMC filter in front of the in front of the EMC filter. I can install the frights depending on the application, and then the output of the EMC filter have similar folk philosophy like the F3. I have the line going to the to the input of the converter, and the line uh, used to synchronize, uh, which goes under. Okay. Mm, on the input of the converter, I'm going to have certain resistance, capacitors, and inductances. Uh, that they are called harmonic filter. Afterwards, I'm going to give a bit more details what harmonic filter means. Then I have the charging circuit with uh, contactor and resistor, resistors and some fuses. Yeah? And the converter, we have uh, output with DC, which connected to, to the inverter. So now let's see uh, production line, uh, production, production line, <laughs> product selection criteria. So, so which uh, variables, which points I have to keep in mind um, in order to select a product. No? So in case of JR9, uh, what I need to keep in mind or why, what is going to make me select this uh, module in the input of my um, system. For example, THDI is not specified. 
or they mention maybe uh, the customer mentions if you just need to fulfill the standard harmonics uh, for for the, for the industrial drives or, or inverters yeah there is no braking power or continuous regeneration yeah? so this means there will be no uh, energy return from the mains which i have to deal with somehow um specified thgi is uh, around 15 percent yeah in this case, uh, remember, if we, if we just 50% the THI, I can easily reach this by uh, installing two rectifiers in parallel when I have a, a transformer with two outputs, and this is called 12 pulses uh, connection method. When the power supply is, uh, well, three phases, 400 volts, 690, and remember, 500 volts. So a GR9 can be supplied with 500 volts as well. And uh, typical applications, um, um, fan, pump, rolling mills, basically any, any application, yeah. F3, F3 selection criteria. Uh, when I have braking power, when, when my motor is uh, regenerating energy and the energy is, is big enough in order to, to consider alternative uh, solutions to uh, the, the, the braking resistor, okay? When the regenerated energy is continuous, of course, because in this case, the breaking resistor becomes very, very big. Yeah. And, and it's a waste of, of energy. When the THDI is not specified, or is it fine to have a THDI below 40% at load condition? Um, when the power supply required in my system is 3 phases, 400 volts, 690, or again, 500 volts. Okay. So in projects with 500 volts, um, Please remember, keep in mind to use this, this uh, uh, product. And typical applications, of, of course, uh, when we have big powers and a big uh, regenerated energy. So applications like, like cranes or, yeah, this kind. When to use RHE converter? Well, like F3, when I have braking power, or continuous regenerating energy, yeah, because those, those are the modules uh, able to return energy to the mains uh, continuously. Uh, in this case, what I'm gonna, why I'm going to select this product, because the, is, it, is it specified that the THDI uh, on the input of the system is below 5%. Yeah. Mm, typical applications, again, uh, cranes, for example, because we have, uh, 50% at least of the time vision energy or uh, applications where the low harmonics is requi required. Yeah. For example, big industries when you have a lot of, where you have a lot of motors installed, the, 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 the factory owner can, can specify that all the system has, has to be very low harmonic. So, yeah. And uh, finally, uh, if the application has to be installed in marine, yeah, because the RHE is one of the modules uh, that, uh, that we have certified with a marine certificate, in this case, the MBGL. RHG selection criteria. When I have a matching SVG1, so one-to-one -one installation, uh, when I have a space limitations, because uh, remember this module have a built-in DC reactor, so this makes uh, the rectifier very compact. And uh, when there is marine as well, because this module is certified for marine. So when marine is, is requested, the RHG is the input module. You have to keep in mind for the input stage in case region energy is not needed. Yeah. Okay, we have seen all the options we have on, on the input. Now uh, let's go through the, through the options I have for each uh, for each uh, modules I have, uh, again, rectifier, F3, and active front end. Um, yeah, as mentioned before, in case of GR9 rectifier, I can install a line reactor on the input um, to improve the THGI or the power factor, reduce the input current, of course. And yeah, for each capacity of uh, GR9 rectifier, we have the specific line reactor that you can see on, on this table. Um, RHE converter options, 
Yeah, uh, as mentioned before, uh, in the input of the converter RHC active on N, I must I must install um, what's called um, harmonic filter and the charging circuit. Okay, first option I have is the what's called filter stack. So a stack module, like you can see in the graphic here, where all the components I have mentioned it now are built in. Okay. Um, just to um, do a refresh, um, charging circuit is resistors and uh, contactor, which are connected at, uh, at the power supply, when, when the power supply is given to the system in order to smoothly charge the capacitors. As soon as the capacitors are, are charged, this, this uh, circuit is, is breached. Then I have uh, the, the harmonic filter part, which is uh, um, which can be divided in, in, in two parts. One is the, the pure uh, harmonic filter with uh, reactors, capacitors, and inductances. This part of the circuit is in charge of filtering the switching frequency component of, 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 of the, the RHG, which is around 5 kilohertz, well, depending on, on, on the configuration. Yeah, so, so this uh, part of the circuit uh, cleans the, the, the current shape from the, from the um, switching frequency component, which could harm um, some other components like uh, um, power supplies connected to the main to the same mains where the RHC is connected and, and it's uh, regenerating energy. And finally, the, the boosting reactor, so the big inductance in order to uh, boost the voltage on the input of the RHC in order to be able to manage the current if it goes from the mains to the motor or to the motor from the motor to the mains. So again, summarizing. Um, I have modules called RHF with all those components built in. Then um, you can have, or you can go for the um, semi compact solution for the filter stack. This means uh, simple, single components pre assembled and pre wired in order to make the connection easier. So, in this case, as you can see on the photos, uh, we have a big uh, inductance tower which uh, is, is, is constructed by two inductances. One is the inductance for the harmonic filter, and the other one is the inductance for the, for the boosting. And depending on the size attached or not to the, to the inductances, I have a metal plate with the capacitors and a second metal plate with, with um, the resistors. So as you can see uh, in, by this reference, by the semi-compact solution of the filter stack, the LCR series, um, by ordering this, I get uh, all the components needed to be installed in the input of the converter. Some already pre-assembled and pre-wired in order to make easy installation. Yeah. And finally, um, I have the reference for each single component. So uh, in case of block stack or in case for your system, you prefer to have a single components for the harmonic filter, for the charging circuit, and for the boosting reactor, you can order uh, single components. Yeah, and we have an ordering code for each single part of, of, of this circuit. Now, uh, let's go for the option control boards to be installed inside the RHG. Um, if uh, you remember, I mentioned it before that uh, RHG can be connected in parallel, but when connecting them in parallel, we need to add an option board in order to make the synchronization between modules. Yeah, we have two option cards. One is OPC VG7SI, the second one is OPC VG7SIR. How to choose one or the other? Yeah, this depends, as you can see on the below graphics. If on the input of the system, I have just one transformer or I have a transformer for each module. When I have, when I have just one transformer, um, I can connect up to three uh, converter stacks in parallel, and the option card I'm going to install is the OPC VG7 SIR. When I have a transformer for each uh, converter module, um, I can connect up to six units, and the option I'm going to use is the OPC VG7SI. 
Okay, and finally, let's go for, for the tools we have in, in uh, Fuji Electric. Yeah, as, as you could see, um, when we speak about Frenic VG uh, family, I have a lot of options. I have a lot of references involved. Uh, and, and sometimes it, it's complicated to make the, the product selection. Yeah, for our customers, we have what, uh, what we call the roadmap. All of you know roadmap if you are a customer of, of Fuji Electric. And uh, what we have in, in the, in the um, roadmap is already a pre-selections of the components in case of the three uh, options I have for the input stage. So optimize rectifier, F3 or active from then. Yeah. So let's, let's see an example. Yeah. Uh, I think I can make the table big. Yes. Like this. So what I can find in, in the, in the, in the, in the compendium table. So this example with the using active front end. So um, first I choose uh, my duty, if medium duty and low duty. In this case, we have a medium duty table. And then and then I go for the capacity of the motor. So here you have a standard capacities. In this case, from 90 kilowatts up to 1.3 megawatts. Yeah. Remember, I had to do this calculation with efficiency and so on here in this part, in this, in this box. I can add the efficiency of the system according to the to the components used. Yeah, and well, the just let's go for example for the case of uh, ninety kilowatts motor. So in case of uh, in case I wanna use a Fenix BG family with the RHC converted in the input, and on the output I have a ninety kilowatt motor, which are the the, the components I need to order. So I will have to order an input EMC filter. In this case, the reference FN3359HB215281 unit. After the filter, if you remember the basic diagram I've shown to you, um, fuses, three fuses uh, for each phase. So the reference of the fuse plus the micro switch to, to inform of the status of the, of the, of the fuse. RHF module in this case. So remember the module containing the charging circuit and the boosting reactor and the harmonic filter. One unit. One unit of RHC, in this case 132. Yeah. Fuses for the DC link here. Two fuses for the DC link plus the fuse for the micro, uh, the micro switch fuse. And finally, the uh, inverter module, FRN90 SVG1S. 69. Mm, okay, that was uh, an example. Yeah. More tools we have in, in Fuji Electric in order to help you in, in this uh, product selection. Um, we can, of course, uh, design the complete system cabinet for you. Okay, so. In other words, if, if you are not confident just by ordering the components and assembling, assemble the components by yourself, we can do this for you. Um, at the moment, currently, we have um, old portfolio designed uh, for uh, single components. So this means a single inverter, a single rectifier, or sing, single converter and in the input. And the product is developed uh, up to 450 kilowatts in 690 volts and 400 as well. Yeah. In case of single stack um, configuration, we have all the cabinets design. If the system is more complex than that, then we can um, generate the project on, on, on uh, project base, or we can um, generate the cabinet on project base. Here we have an example of a system with uh, requires 1.2 megawatts uh, with optimized rectifier. Yeah. So in this case, you see, uh, we have one cabinet for the three inverters needed to reach uh, 1.2 megawatts. In this case, three units of 150 kilowatts, 690. And on the input stage, one uh, GR9 plus the line reactor plus the MC filter and in this case a main switch. Yeah. 
Okay, so that was all regarding the options and tools and products. And just uh, let me do a, a brief uh, sum up regarding Marine. I was already introducing this topic, but I, I would like to reinforce some, some information about this. Frank BG family is the family uh, we have uh, fully certified to work in, uh, in marine environment. In this case, uh, the, we have used the DMBGL certification company. Um, the products certified are the, are the um, Fennec BG for the inverter part, RHC for the active front end, plus the RHF and RHD for, for, the, for the rectifier. And um, when ordering the product uh, for using it in, in the in marine industry, you need to specify uh, a certain type code. Yeah, as you see here, the type code is going to be ended by ZDG. Um, uh, why this? Uh, because uh, in order to use properly the product in, in the marine industry, we have to reinforce the, the, the hardware. So this means uh, we add some uh, metal plates on, on, the, on the metallic frame in order to make the product more robust. But as well, we add some varnish on the, on the electronic boards uh, and some saw protection as well on the boost parts. This is why we need a specific uh, type ordering type code, even from the functionality point of view, is 100% equivalent to the standard product. Okay. Um, that's all from my side. If you have doubts in the future about this presentation or about any other uh, Fuji Electric product, please feel free to to um, yeah to send an email to this to this uh, account.